Hey Sander, I'm a neurologist with an interest in epilepsy and I'm based at Queen Square and at the Chalfon Centre at the Epilepsy Society and at an Alson Hemstede with Sign. I'm here to talk to you how to combine antipileptic drugs, but I think the question is always what do we do when the first monotherapy fails? We try another one or we go for add-on therapy? Uh, and this is uh, the, an, a question and people will have different takes on this, but I I will tell you how I would do it. Uh, if the first drug fails, uh, either because of lack of efficacy or side effects, what do we do next? Do we go for monotherapy or add-on therapy uh, with another antipileptic drugs? My view would be that first we should try another antipileptic drug appropriate for the syndrome. We titrate this, dose, uh, this drug to a good dose and then we commence withdrawal of the first drug. Now, uh, if uh, the second drug fails, then we would probably, it's a good idea to do add-on. How do we choose drugs for add-on? It's a very difficult because we don't have very clear evidence base. Uh, I feel that what we need to do is always take into account the individual circumstances of the patient. We have to take into account this, the profile in terms of uh, tolerability of the drugs. We all will have our personal preferences and importantly, more and more is the affordability of the drugs. Do we combine drugs with different mechanisms? Although we have no evidence, probably it intuitively sounds right. We should at least try to uh, combine drugs with different, uh, different mechanisms of action. But I think it's very important that we remember that this is not really a rational uh, polytherapy as we don't really know how this works. We don't know what's behind epilepsy. It's an empirical approach, but using drugs with different mechanisms of actions do make sense. Uh, so how do we combine drugs? I think importantly first is our way to make sure we have the correct diagnosis and we have the correct classification. We try serial monotherapy first, but if this fails, we will combine drugs and then the individual circumstances of the patient, side effect profile of the drugs. Make sure that we understand the potential for pharmacokinetics and dynamic interactions and avoid drugs that can interact. Remember that the affordability, can the patient afford this drug, will the insurers cover this? And I think it would make sense that we try in first instance, drugs with different mechanisms of action. Although I'm the first one to recognize that the evidence is still not there for different, uh, for different combinations and for so-called rational polytherapy.